Hello again. So um, in this part of lecture, I want to go over a bit of what is structural mechanics. So in the last uh, video, we, we introduced this concept. Uh, this course structures 200 is introduction to structural mechanics. But what what is all of that? And so uh, again, that's uh, it's simply the title of the lecture today. Uh, what is structural mechanics and when will I use it? So we just have a brief video here. Uh, to hopefully provide a little bit of guidance there. So uh, the simple explanation um, is simply, you know, if we just look at, well, what is it? It's the study of how external forces, and so you know, read forces, forces and moments. So external actions generate internal stresses. Um, so what do I mean by, by that there? So say I have, um, you know, this little beam here and I have a little beam or, or foam member and I pull on it. Well, this member is now in tension. And so there's these two little tension stresses that get developed on that. Um, and you know how to solve for that from you know your, your previous statics course. Um, but with you know this now, course now is where we wanna know, well, how big does that element need to be in order so it doesn't break. So we, we've all uh, pulled on a rubber band until it broke. Well, we exceeded its allowable tensile stress and the ability to uh, determine, well, what that stress needs to, what that stress is and how much load um, it can take is really what the fundamentals of this course is. And that's uh, this um, structural mechanics. And so if we were to take uh, this element, and again, we're to uh, put some tension load on it. And then if we were to you know, cut it and take a free body diagram, well, we'd see that we'd still have a tension force inside there. Uh, it's because it's, it, that little piece has to be in equilibrium. And then the stress, the tension stress, which is going to be generated is simply going to be the force divided by the area um, and the, uh, the cross-sectional area of the element. And so, well, why is that useful? And when will I ever use this uh, again? And so that's just kind of my next prompting question is when will I ever use this? Um, really for all structural design work. And so what I mean by that is, you know, say you, you had your, your rubber band um, or let's just take it to uh, a slightly different example. Let's use a, a fishing line. So a fishing line that will be sold as a, this is a 10 kg line, this is a 40 kg line. So that's the weight times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's the force in newtons that uh, that line can take before it breaks. And that's its breaking stress. So you know that you can pull on that fishing line until uh, for, you know, 40 times 9.81 uh, if it's a 40 kg line and then it will break at that point, and that will be the cross-sectional area will have, uh, that's, that's all the stress that it can take. And so stresses tend to be uh, determined by the material which you're using. Um, so a, uh, a, a plastic line versus a steel line, a uh, steel line will be able to take uh, more load because it had for the same diameter because it has a higher tensile stress. And so, and you know, that is essentially what we will be talking about in this class. And uh, as I said, with these concepts get used again and again and again in design. And they're used so much that I thought, well, I would provide you a, a little bit of a roadmap as to, um, you know, where you'll see this again within this curriculum at the University of Auckland. So um, we'll start with, you know, what you already know. You already know from Engine 121, you've already learned statics, you've already learned uh, how to analyze statically determinate system. And statics, I, I tell you, it's a friend for life. It'll never let you down. Um, as a structural engineer, you only need to learn three things. Uh, you only need to know three things. First, sum of the forces equals zero. Second is the sum of the moments equals zero. And the third one is you can't push on a rope. And the can't push on a rope uh, really comes in at mechanics and materials. And that's a, it's a buckling problem. So for our curriculum, we split it over two different courses. So you'll have a little bit in this structures to uh, structural engineering 200, um, in which we will take you through, in addition to some some load, you know, understanding loads and load paths and 
uh, some you know general design work. The mechanics and materials portion of this course will focus on uh, how to design for beams for both flexural and shear stresses. Um, and then in Struct Engine 201, uh, we'll do a little bit more shear and then buckling, and that will be the mechanics portion of it. Also in Structural Engine 201, you'll see sort of uh, how do we, the thing that we pair well with the mechanics and materials is this material behavior. And so we'll, you'll learn a bit about, you know, how concrete, steel, timber are produced for construction and how they, those different materials have different properties and how we have to design with those properties in mind using the concept of mechanics and materials so that we uh, get the most out of the material and use it appropriately. Uh, then, uh, also in Structures 201, um, you'll learn about indeterminate analysis. So everything you've learned so far and what you will use in this course is determinate structures. So the number of equations of equilibrium you have equals the number of unknowns. So in a 2D system, three equations, three unknowns. In a 3D system, nine equations, nine unknowns. Um, and while that's a nicety for analysis, it's not terribly helpful for a structure because it's not, it doesn't have what we call redundancy. So if you have a, um, a system which is structurally determinate, so say that you have a simply supported beam where it's got a pin and a roller on one end, and we take that roller away, all of a sudden the beam is unstable and it will swing away and it will collapse. Um, if you have an indeterminate system, you can lose one of those support conditions and you still have a structure which will stay up. So again, this is sort of coming uh, attractions and uh, you'll learn more about this uh, next semester. Um, in your third year, we take what this sort of core foundation is and we start getting a little bit more refined. We learn about structural dynamics. So this is an important topic in New Zealand because we have earthquakes and the buildings will move, but it's also a topic for if you're designing bridges or floors that you don't want to have bouncing up and down and making the occupants of the building uncomfortable. They might be perfectly safe, but it might be a um, uh, uncomfortable for the users. And that's, you know, all of this is about people. We want to make sure that uh, what we design is going to be uh, fit for purpose. Also in Structural Engineering 300, uh, you'll learn a bit more about loading. As I said, we'll cover it briefly um, in this course, really as an introduction, but you'll learn some more subtleties there. Um, also, you'll learn how structural dynamics is used to determine earthquake loading on structures and learn about wind design as well. And then uh, you finally get to start looking at uh, structures as systems as a whole. So in your second year, Predominantly what we will teach you is how to analyze a single member. So for example, a beam or a column or possibly a simple frame. But um, we're not teaching you how frames interact together, how floors and roofs act like diaphragms to get uh, the inertial load of the structure as it's moving, uh, moved out into the lateral system. So your walls or your frames and then down into the ground. So you learn a lot about structural systems and load paths. Um, and really that start to deepen your understanding of how structures behave. Um, and then on top of that, we have the three pillars of design. So these are the most common construction materials uh, used around the world, timber, steel, and concrete. Each of those will teach you how to uh, design um, beams and columns uh, and use the loadings, which you've learned how to use in the previous semester and in Structural Engineering 300, how to apply all of those uh, so that you can do the fundamental designs of, of buildings. You'll learn a little bit about connection design for all of these. And so you're starting to become kind of a nuts and bolts engineer. You're starting to be able to use design standards uh, to analyze or, or design real structures. And it's that's a really exciting part because you finally, we've built up on this foundational knowledge to something which feels practical. Um, then in your fourth year, uh, you've got two courses, which are, again, a systems level and, and design level courses. So you've got Structural Engineering 710, which is more design of systems um, and more like sort of putting um, much of what you've learned in third year together and starting to look at real buildings. Um, and then also uh, Structural Engineering 711, 
will be earthquake engineering and multi-story design. And so at this stage, you now have all of the analytical tools where you could go out and you could be a graduate engineer. Um, there's still you know, a lot you'd have to learn on the job, which is typical of most degrees, but you, this, this sends you out with the fundamentals that you need. And so um, just before we send you out the door in our curriculum, uh, we provide you an opportunity to use those skills in a capstone course. And so this is on your final semester of your fourth year, and you will have essentially a simulated practice where there will be a real project um, with advisors from industry, and they will come in and you will be um, uh, on a team where you will be the structural engineer. Um, and those of you who are going on to the general civil program, you might be the geotech or the environmental or the construction management or the traffic engineer also working on that project as a team um, and then you know pitching a, a solution to these real world problems to real world engineers. So it's, uh, it's quite exciting and uh, this is where we can see where we're building up from there. And so all of that starts with um, our, our friends down here, statics and mechanics and materials. That's the foundation on which we build all of these other skills in structural engineering. So uh, it, it's going to be an exciting course. Looking forward to delivering it for you. And uh, thank you very much.